Okay guys, we are going to go over color mixing and watercolor in this video. We are going to be making replications of Van Gogh's Starry Night. Um, they could be a little bit different if you want, but we do want to make sure we incorporate some trees and some type of small village into this. First, I'm going to have you guys go in and super lightly, just dragging your pencil, um, draw out your design for the bottom of your drawing. Now we're going to be working with watercolor and watercolor can be used either as a paint or as a drawing medium. So I'm going to show you how we are going to build up color using different watercolor washes. So we're going to be either picking a cool color scheme. So your cool colors are going to be your blues, your greens, your violets or you can pick a warm color scheme, which is gonna be reds, yellows, and oranges. So I'm using two watercolors on these, which looks something like this. You guys can experiment with that. I also have these little Crayola palettes. If you wanna play around with these as well, you absolutely can. And then just mix your colors on a small piece of palette paper. So what you're gonna need is, you know, your watercolors, and then you're gonna need a big bucket of water and your piece of mixed media paper, which is a little bit thicker than your regular paper so that it can, um, you know, hold the watercolor a little bit better. I had previously started working on one using warm colors, and I'm gonna go back into this a little bit later to show you guys some detail work. But I'm gonna hold it up close and you can see how I have a really light wash in the background. That's going to be step one. So I am going to start to work with my cool colors on this. And I'm gonna show you guys how you could go about using either type of paint. So for a wash, I want to use a fairly large brush because I'm going to be covering a lot of the paper. Now, we're going to make it so light so that you have some type of background to work with and your paper is not just pure white, uh, but also so that you can start to build some color and then when you go in and start to do your darker tones, uh, you'll have something to build upon. If you are using the tubed watercolor, you just need a very, very little bit. The reason being is you want to take just a hint of pigment, you want to drag it off to the side and really mix it with a whole bunch of water. Now when we're doing these light washes, you do want to try to go around uh, some of the things you drew out for your town or tree sections of your painting, uh, but because we are going to be going in dark with neutral colors, it is okay if you go over them a little bit. So you can see just how light my wash is. And I'm gonna just start incorporating a bunch of different colors. And you guys can put water down directly on the paper if you want, and then take a little, little bit of the paint and mix that in if you'd like. And this is just gonna be for your background. But I still want you guys kind of doing side to side strokes, And you can use a variety of cool colors. And I'm gonna use a lot of water to blend these together. So if you see my brush moving to the side, I just keep mixing in water on my brush and creating a super, super light wash. Now, if I were to use a little bit from the Crayola palette, you can add just a little bit of water to it and start to bring it in that way. And there might be, you know, a few different colors that you wanna use from the Crayola palette that I don't necessarily have in the tubes. So I encourage you guys to kind of experiment with this. If you wanna practice on another sheet of paper ahead of time, you can do that as well. Now, once you're done with your full watercolor wash, you're gonna to wanna to fill the entire paper. So I'll just show you a close up. That's what it's gonna to start to look like. It's very, very light. Your paper is gonna to start to curl a little bit. That's okay, once it dries, it will flatten. Um, not completely, but enough so that you could go ahead and work on it. If you want to mix any of the colors in the Crayola palette, I'm gonna have you guys just use a small piece of palette paper Make sure you're rinsing your brush off in between. 
and then you could mix together a whole bunch of different colors. I'm gonna take some purple in here. So I would grab a bunch of different things for your table, put together some palette paper with some tubed color, um, put aside, um, you know, a few Crayola palettes for you guys to use. So now I'm gonna put this one aside and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start to show you guys how we're gonna develop and use watercolor, not so much as a painting material now, but as a drawing material. So I'm gonna get rid of this sheet of palette paper I had here and I'm just going to use this sheet and if I wanna incorporate any of these Crayola colors, I can do that as well. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush and I'm not gonna have you guys draw in the swirls for your Van Gogh inspired painting, rather than have you just kind of draw them in and mix them naturally. So we're gonna be going in, and we could use a little bit more pigment now, but you still wanna add water to it and mix it off on the side. You don't wanna just scoop up the paint exactly how it is. And by resting colors side by side and mixing up different tones, you're gonna to be able to separate the different colors for your swirls. So you can see I just put an orange next to that. Now if I do wanna blend them together, I could just apply water directly to the colors on my paper. Not too much water, just a little bit, and that's gonna help you blend those out. You do wanna have some separation of color so that you can tell that you have these swirls in the sky. Um, with the painting we looked at in class, you can tell by the separation of color uh, how he went in and was able to create that atmosphere. And I encourage you guys to get creative with this. Don't rush through it. Take your time and kind of determine where you want your swirls to go. Um, I like to usually you know, eventually fill the whole entire paper, but maybe start to plan out where I'm going to incorporate these. So I have this whole section here. I think I'm gonna to continue to bring this downward and I'm gonna put a really long spiral in it. And I'm just keeping this one orange to start out with and I'm gonna blend it out a little bit using some extra water. And then I'm going to add in a yellow next to it to start to build up another color. And like you guys can see, I'm just using a very, very little bit of water and I'm creating more of a drawing surface. So hopefully you guys can see how that's separating. If you do get too much water on your paper, it's gonna start to get really mucky. And I would just let that dry out and then go in um, once it's dry with another color and then build off of there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to apply a red next to this. And I think you can start to tell how watercolor can be used as a drawing medium rather than painting. And I think that these are really cool because you guys can be very expressive with them. Um, there's really no exact rules other than I do want you guys to eventually fill in the entire paper. And things will start to interconnect uh, kind of like they did when we were doing our optical illusion pieces at the beginning of the year. So step one is to get a really, really light sketch of your town and your tree pieces. Those we're gonna go in later, and I'm gonna show you guys how to use brown and um, black color watercolors to fill those in. Um, we're gonna do a light colored wash using either warm or cool colors. Once that dries out, probably 10 or 15 minutes, then we're gonna start and go in and do our swirls. All right. 